Hi everyone. Today we're going to continue on our topic from last time, but I have sincerely been trying to break it down and make it even easier to understand and I've been taking too long and I got reprimanded from the Lord today and he said, just do the message. So I will do my best. It's a really important topic and I don't think we hear a lot of people talk about it, but it really sets us free. The purpose of the topic is why do things happen? Why do good things happen to people? Why do bad things happen? And a lot of times people just say, well, God works in mysterious ways or you don't know what God's going to do. And that's just not true. God in his word says exactly what he's going to do. There are spiritual laws in place. Spiritual laws govern natural laws. Spiritual laws supersede natural laws. Without getting too technical or too detailed, um, when I learned this, I was so excited. I didn't feel like anyone ever told me that. And then I went and researched it myself in the Word of God. So we'll start with Romans 8, 2, and that's where the foundation scripture is. And then I'm going to try to break it down and dissect it a little bit to help us understand why does it matter? Spiritual laws, all laws, um, come with some kind of force. So, for instance, natural law, the force of gravity. We all know if we throw something up, the force of gravity is just going to fall or, or fall down. Um, we can The law of lift, supersede, that's a natural law, supersedes the law of gravity. And then you can see how to supersede natural laws. You just take another natural law, and if it supersedes it, that's like that's what flying is. But the purpose of this is to explain that spiritual laws are in this world. And I'm going to make it real simple. There's a law of light and life and a spiritual law of death and darkness. The force that comes behind or with the spirit of life is faith. The force that comes with the spirit of death and the spirit of sin and death is fear. And that's really what I wanted to get, get at, is this topic of fear. And a lot of times, we, uh, my dad and I talk about this and a lot of uh, preacher friends, and when I used to hear the word fear, I would say to myself, um, I'm not afraid of anything. You know, maybe heights. Well, I wasn't afraid of heights, but, you know, and I didn't realize that it's, it, we're not talking about being afraid. We're talking about the spirit of fear. Fear is not an emotion. It's a spiritual force. So when we act, when we get frantic over someone not returning a phone call, or we get frantic when things don't go our way, we are allowing the spirit of fear to control us. The spirit of fear unchecked becomes a stronghold. And a stronghold of the spirit of fear is governed by the spirit of death. And that's exactly what happened to me when I was 21. And you can go to the website, our website, kingworldwide.com, if you want to hear the story, the testimony. But I, I, I'm speaking from experience. I didn't know that these things were happening, but this is exactly what happened. So the word um, govern, I think it's important to know this word, means to control, to dominate, to rule, to regulate. So... God created us with the authority to govern. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God, that automatically gave Satan the right to govern. And whatever laws Satan was using is the laws that were going to be governed. So that's why Satan's laws is the spirit of sin and death. That is why the curse, tragedy, terror, Sickness, disease, poverty, lack. That is the curse. That's why it's all over the world, all over this world. The thing is, when we have Jesus Christ, when we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior in our heart, we have been given through Jesus Christ the authority to govern again. And it doesn't just happen with a snap. What we receive is can be fast. It takes time to develop. But most Christians in the past, and I did not know this until seven years ago, really, did not use or exercise their authority to govern because, one, they didn't know they had it. Two, they didn't understand spiritual laws. Faith 
overcomes fear. Faith supersedes fear. Fear does not supersede faith unless we speak it and allow it. So the purpose of today's message was to start talking about these spiritual laws. The spiritual law of fear is what most people live by. They say, no, I have Jesus in my heart. I don't live by that. Well, if you've ever complained or if you talk about money or if you talk about problems, sickness, disease, aches, pains, and that's dominating your thought life or that's every other word or that's controlling your day, that is being controlled by the spirit of the law of sin and death. It doesn't mean you're demon possessed. It means our mind hasn't been renewed and we haven't put a stop to it. So here are some other things to, to see if we're if we are living this, because these things are what we can put a stop to. Anxiety, envy, insecurity, no confidence, being jealous, selfishness, uh, resentment, strife, franticness, angst, always being in a rush, 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 rush. Jesus was never in a rush. That is one of the things that I've learned in the seven years that if I start seeing, like I'm a go-getter. I've had to, I used to be a go-getter. I'm still, I stay down under whatever God needs me to do. And whatever he needs me to do is I execute that with as best precision as I possibly can. To me, that is the greatest walk of life. But leading, go-getting before I have the, um, the assignment is self-will. And it's try, self trying to make, self, make things happen. So when we get under that, we start feeling um, frantic. And then that feeling we are letting the feelings be dominated by the spirit of fear. And what happens, it starts ruining our day. We start getting sick. We start having problems, um, finances. But let's just say you're a young person. Hey, buddy, how are you? Let's just say you're a young person. And if you're allowing um, worry, or, or I'm speaking to a very amazing um, DJ here. And if he's concerned about who is checking out his stuff and what he does, then he would be under the spirit of fear. He would be allowing that to control him. But I know he doesn't do that. He casts that out in the name of Jesus. He said, that's not my thought, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. And then he goes and he gets the word that speaks to him. Is greater as he was in me than he was in the world? Or my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And he doesn't have a care. He has to cast it. But every one of us Christians, we have to actively Grab it and cast it because if we don't, it will overtake us. And I'm experienced with that. I had experience with that and it's not very fun. So I don't mean to be cutting off right when you're getting on, but we are finishing and we will see y'all soon. Have a great rest of the week and just see if you can recognize um, the spirit, the spiritual forces, faith or fear, uh, worry or confidence, joy. You don't have to feel it. We just do it and then get in the word and it makes us feel lines up with what we really believe, and that's joy in Jesus. Okay, talk soon.